How many stars are there? For centuries, man's concept of space was based upon what he could see with the unaided eye, a field limited to a few thousand stars. But about 400 years ago, a tool was found which enabled man to roam the uncharted pathways of outer space. It was Galileo who thought of turning a telescope toward the heavens, and in so doing, he snapped the fetters binding man to earth. I betook myself to observation of the heavenly bodies. And first of all, I viewed the moon as near as if it were scarcely two semi diameters of the earth distant. After the moon, I observed the heavenly bodies, both thick stars and planets, with incredible delight. The telescope grew rapidly in size as astronomy and the science of optics progressed hand in hand. Through the passing years, man dreamed and built. And with the completion of the 100-inch telescope at Mount Wilson, California, he could look with unbelieving wonder at even more of the handiwork of God. And man dreamed again and built yet again the giant of Palomar, a giant whose 500 tons of glass and steel are poised so delicately the hand of a child can move it on its course. A giant whose 200-inch eye stares unblinking into space. An eye that is daily pushing back the boundaries of man's knowledge. So how many stars are there? The sun is the number one star as far as we're concerned. To us, it doesn't look like the other stars in the sky, but that's because we're so much closer to it than to any of the others. We're only 93 million miles from the sun. That's a lot of miles, but it's still very close when we're thinking of astronomical distances. The reason our Earth is so close to the sun is that it's one of the sun's family. That is, one of the nine planets that revolve around the sun and make up what we call the solar system. It isn't possible in a view like this to represent the true scale in either size or distance. So let's compare them accurately as to size. We will see them here superimposed over an actual time-lapse photograph of the edge of the sun with prominences extending thousands of miles into space. Closest to the sun is Mercury, just a little fellow as planets go. Then there's Venus, the Earth, and Mars. That big fellow is Jupiter, 1,280 times the size of the Earth. Then comes Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and poor little Pluto, way out in the cold, going around in a great big orbit averaging 3,675,000,000 miles away from the sun. But that sun, just how large is it? Well, if it were hollow, you could drop more than one million spheres the size of our Earth down inside and rattle them around. For the sun is about 1,500,000 times larger than the Earth. But away out there in the heavens are other stars so much larger, they make our sun but a mere speck in comparison. How far away are they? Well, let's take a trip from the sun just to the nearest star out in space. To make this journey, we'll travel at the speed of light, 186,000 miles a second. At this speed, you could make seven complete trips around the world in less time than it would take for just one good sneeze. Let's say we begin our journey on January 1st. At exactly 12 o'clock noon, we leave the sun and hurtle into space at this inconceivable speed. We pass the orbits of Mercury, Venus, and span the 93 million miles that separate the Earth from the sun in just eight minutes 19 seconds. We continue on passing Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, 
And finally, we reach Pluto, the last sentinel outpost of our solar system at 531. And remember, we have traveled 3 billion, 675 million miles already, and it's still January 1st. But wait a minute. Our journey was to the nearest star, not to the limits of the solar system. We haven't even started our trip yet. We must continue to travel as the days, the weeks, and the months pass. Finally, a whole year goes by. Then two years, three, four years. And on April 19th of the fifth year, we reach Alpha Centauri, that nearest visible star out there in space. To use the astronomer's language, we've traveled four and three-tenths light years. But our telescopes don't stop here. Their searching eyes have probed the depths of space thousands, millions, yes, hundreds of millions of light years, and still there are stars beyond. This tremendous knowledge is relatively new because not too many years ago, astronomers were unable to conceive of anything beyond our own Milky Way system. To them, this was the universe. Then a new discovery rocked the astronomical world to its foundations. For years, telescopes had revealed hazy objects called nebulae distributed throughout the heavens. Some of these, such as the Flame Nebula in the constellation of Orion, which under ideal conditions may be seen with the naked eye, and the spectacular Filamentous Nebula in Cygnus were known to be composed of luminous gas. Many had a definite spiral shape, thought then to be great whirlpools of luminous gas in the process of forming into a star. However, an intensive study was begun of the great spiral nebula in Andromeda. Bringing to bear the superb resolving power of the 100-inch telescope, this nebula was found to be made up of individual stars and was, in reality, another galaxy. It was this discovery that pushed back the boundaries of our knowledge and expanded enormously our concept of the material universe. This new knowledge enabled us to understand the structure of our own galaxy. And at last, we had an explanation for the Milky Way. Our galactic system is very similar to the Andromeda galaxy. Seen from the edge, it would appear something like this. The Milky Way is merely our view of our own galaxy. Its diameter is about 100,000 light years, and we are located about 33,000 light years from the center. This system is revolving, and our speed in it is about 200 miles a second. Even at this speed, it will take us at least 200 million years to make one revolution. But ours is just one island universe. How many more are there? Everywhere we look out in space, there are others. There are at least 200 million of these galaxies just within the range of the Palomar Telescope. In this amazing photograph made with the 200-inch telescope, the brighter spots are stars in our own galaxy. Let's blot these out. Now those hazy little spots remaining are not stars. Each is another galaxy almost a billion light years away. Each is composed of a hundred billion suns. But now, how many stars are there? Astronomers tell us there are at least 100 billion stars in our galaxy, the Milky Way. But remember, there are 200 million of these galaxies within known space. So if we would number just those stars within the range of our present telescopes, we must multiply 100 billion times 200 million. And this equals 20 quintillion stars.
But remember now, these calculations are based on those stars which are visible with optical telescopes. Recent developments have given astronomers a radically new tool, the radio telescope. These giants not only detect stars invisible to optical telescopes, they probe several times as far into the depths of space. So our estimate of 20 quintillion stars is much too low. We must be prepared to add billions upon billions more as man's knowledge of the universe continues to grow. Now, of course, the human mind cannot begin to grasp the meaning of such a number. But maybe this will help. Think for a moment, if you can, how many grains of sand there are. Sir James Jeans tells us that the total number of stars is probably something like the total number of grains of sand on all the seashores of all the world. So how many stars? God alone knows the answer. Man may never know the exact number, but each time he looks and sees what lies beyond, he must ever be mindful of the infinite power that put it there.